Okay, so here's the problem. Your Windows computer is outdated. You find you can't upgrade to Windows 11, and Windows 10 will stop receiving security updates in 2025. That's next year. Windows 11 requires newer hardware, sometimes only three to five years old. Even if you can bypass the Windows 11 minimum requirements, and that is possible, Microsoft has no obligation to keep providing updates for such systems. In fact, a new update is reportedly going to start affecting some PCs more than 10 years old or so, such that the bypass tricks won't work anymore. I suspect that situation will get more restrictive as 2025 passes by. Computers not getting security updates for their operating system is a big deal these days because online use is a major part of time spent on your computer. And when I say computer, I mean both a Windows desktop PC or a laptop. You definitely don't want to get hacked. It's not a pleasant experience and having an older, unsupported OS is probably a good way to get hacked in the first place. Essentially, if you fall into the camp where you have a computer that can't be, quote, legitimately upgraded to Windows 11, you have three choices. First, don't do anything. Continue using Windows 10 past its expiration date and play the odds. Second, buy a new PC or laptop, either Windows or Apple. Three, continue with your current and otherwise working device, but don't use Windows. Spoiler, we are considering using Linux. So this is not a step-by-step -step guide to installing and using Linux, although I have included many curated links in the video description, which will be helpful if you decide to take a crack at doing so. What I'm trying to do is show the regular Windows computer user that there is a viable alternative to having to use Windows or indeed Mac. If you don't feel confident in installing an operating system, and I know most computer users have never had to do such a thing, it's not hard at all, but if in doubt, reach out to that one nerdy friend or relative that we all have and get them to help. Or grab a teenager if you can pry them off TikTok for 20 minutes. About Linux. Very briefly, Linux comprises a varied collection of freely available operating systems. Apple's Mac OS is based upon a version of the Unix operating system. Linux is classified as a Unix-like operating system. Once considered a hobbyist OS, Linux now runs a good chunk of the web servers in the world and powers almost all of the current supercomputers. The Android OS is also based upon Linux, so it's really one of those hiding in plain sight sort of situations. The variety of choices for a Linux OS can be completely overwhelming for newcomers, so I'm going to exert my editorial authority and pick two versions or distributions to save time and aggravation. So you have a choice of two. You can pick Zorin OS or Linux Mint. I'm sure people in the comments will question my choices, but in my experience, and I'm an old IT guy, so I do actually have some experience with different versions of Linux. These two are more ready to use out of the box and perhaps more Windows-like in their appearance than most others, especially for new users who have likely never even thought or heard about Linux. What can you actually do with Linux? Well, the basics you're used to, like web browsing, checking email, and working with Office documents, all work fine on Linux. You can view, organize, and edit your photos, listen to your music collections or streaming services, watch YouTube videos or movies on Netflix. You can also play many popular Steam games on Linux if your PC could do that on Windows. Note that you cannot easily run Windows programs on Linux, since they were not designed to do so. There are Linux alternatives for things like Microsoft Office, PDF viewers, and so on. Again, see the links below, please. The only exception is specialized software like Adobe Photoshop. 
Web-based apps should all work since most popular web browsers have versions available for Linux, even Microsoft Edge. Note that if you rely on Microsoft's OneDrive, there is no official Microsoft OneDrive client for Linux, although there are some third-party clients that support it. Now, I have not tried any of these, so I don't know how much of a heavy lift that might be for the average computer user. That might be a deal breaker if you want to continue using OneDrive. I mean, you can still access it via a web browser, but it won't be integrated into your system like it is in Windows. Will your files and other hardware work? Linux supports all common file types like documents, spreadsheets, photos, music, and video. As for hardware, most printers, Wi-Fi adapters, graphics cards, and other common peripherals will work fine. Some specialty or proprietary hardware may not have drivers available, like um, all-in-one printers, um, like from Canon or Lexmark, they may not have Linux drivers available. You can probably check that before thinking about switching. So the good thing about Linux is you can try it without actually installing it, which is very useful to see if it's going to work with your hardware. To do that, you can boot from a USB drive to test it out before actually installing it. And there are, again, there are instructions down below for both Zorin and uh, Linux Mint. So you can try that. I should note also, if you have a much older computer, say 10 years old or so, there are versions of Linux Mint and of Zorin that are more specifically designed to use with older PCs. In other words, they have less requirements as far as system resources. Um, there are I think XFCE or LXDE versions of Linux Mint and Zorin, and I will leave links to them down in the description below also. If you do want to proceed to installing Linux after you've tried it, you should back up all your data from your computer first. In other words, copy your you know, documents, photos, videos, music, etc. to a large thumb drive or external drive, and then you can copy them back to your computer after Linux is installed. Linux has similarly named folders should be easy enough to figure out what goes where. Again, please consult the links below for more information. So to sum it up, Linux will let you keep using your old PC at no cost. Oh yeah, Linux is free by the way, just in case that wasn't clear. It supports the basics like web, email, photos, music, and video, which is what most people use their computers for. You can try it out in a USB drive first to see if you like it and if it works with your hardware. Anyway, I hope you'll consider that as an option if you have an older computer that's not compatible with Windows 11 because uh, time's running out. Once again, thanks for watching and wasting time with me and uh, hope to see you again in the next one. Bye.